Now we're going to talk about titrating a weak acid with a strong base. All right, this involves a little more steps, a few more steps. The strong base is going to ionize completely. The weak acid doesn't. So that compounds the fun just a minute, just a little bit. So you're going to have two parts of this. You're going to have the neutralization stoichiometry, like we did in the last step. But then you also have to tack onto it an equilibrium problem. You should realize that the pH of this will always be greater than 7. Why? Let's take our example reaction together. So this would be your um, neutralization reaction. A uh, weak acid and a strong base make a basic salt. So a basic salt has a pH that's greater than 7. Okay. So here's our problem. Hydrogen cyanide gas, HCN, a powerful respiratory inhibitor, is highly toxic. It is a very weak acid with a Ka of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. When dissolved in water, if a 50 ml sample of 0.1 molar HCN is titrated with 0.1 molar NaOH, calculate the pH of the solution. I think we should calculate the pH of the solution before anything happens first. So let's do that. So the pH before, when it's just the HCN <coughs> in the volumetric flask, is characterized by the dissociation of the acid into its hydrogen ion and its cyanide ion. This is just a rice table. Our initial concentration of the HCN is 0.1 molar. We have none of this and none of this. After it dissociates, some of this will be gone. Some of this will be formed as well as this at equilibrium. Our equilibrium concentration can be found by this equation. So we are quite accustomed to solving these problems by writing the equilibrium expression. So Ka is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10 is equal to x squared over 0.1 because the Ka is so incredibly small, this x is insignificant and can be ignored. So x is equal to, I didn't do this math. 7.87 so times 10 to the negative 6. Let's recall X is also the value of the hydrogen ion concentration. So um, Change. the pH is going to be five So the pH is five point one oh. It's pH before anything happens. Now let's make something happen. Let's add 8 mil of the NaOH from the burette. So we're adding 8 mil of titrant into the weak acid. Remember, these are occurring in two steps instead of one. The first step is just like you did before. It's going to be the neutralization. Remember, the neutralization stoichiometry requires Moles. We need to figure out what the reaction is that is um, driving the pH, and that would be the weak acid plus the strong base yielding water and the cyanide ion. So initially we, are, we have um, 50 mLs. 0.1 molar, <coughs> and we are adding 8 mL of 0.1 molar NaOH. 
We have none of this, none of this. So here we have five millimoles. So initially we have five millimoles of our weak acid. We have 0.8 millimoles of the OH. We have none and none. What is the limiting reactant in this neutralization? Okay, so the OH is going to limit the change before neutraliz neutralization will be, all of this will be used up. The stoichiometry is one to one here, so we will use the like amount here. And both of these will increase. I'm not really concerned about the water, but I do need to be concerned about the signing uh, concentration. So it will <coughs> increase. So at neutralization, I have 4.2 millimole of my HCN, <coughs> I have no OH, and I have 0.8 millimole of the CN minus. All right, this is the end of the neutralization. From the neutralization step, I have to go to a rice table. Okay, so step one done, step two started. You know that rice tables require you to use molarity. So uh, let's figure out the molarity of uh, the pertinent uh, species. Hey, why am I even underlining that? Uh, you need to see what uh, the equation for the rice table that determines the pH is the dissociation. Okay, you have some of this. All right, so our total volume is 58 milliliters. HN is 0.0724 molar. What is it? 0.0724 molar. And this is? 0.0138 molar. So initially, I have 0.0724 molar HCN. I have no H. But I do have, from this neutralization problem, in my Erlenmeyer, I do have a quantity of the CN ion. All right, the CN ion in the beaker is going to present a Le Chatelier situation where this common ion will shove the equilibrium further to the left, preventing the dissociation. And what will that do to the pH? What will it do to the pH? Make it bigger or smaller? It will increase pH. Good. OK. So then this becomes a regular old rice table. A quantity of this will disappear, a quantity of this will appear at equilibrium. We have um, <coughs> our original amount minus that quantity. Putting it into a Ka expression, Ka is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10 is equal to x, which represents our hydrogen ion concentration. Because this value is so small compared to these um, uh, concentrations, these two x's may be omitted. This one is obviously important and may never be omitted. <coughs> Hydrogen X, which is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration, is equal to <coughs> 3.25 times 10 to the negative okay. 9. Mm -hmm. 3.26 times 10 to the negative 9th. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, and that's molar. pH is equal to the negative log of that quantity. So the pH of that solution is 8.49. Boy, that's a lot of work for for three decimal or three <laughs> little numbers. Uh, but there you go. Now you see the general um, way these go: neutralization, stoic problem, then rice table. Was that part B or is that just that part A? That was part B. That was. That was it.
Okay. No, that was part A. I'm sorry. That was part A. So we haven't done part B yet. Let's do part B. Smart people are going to look at this and say at the halfway point of the titration. <coughs> at the, no. Is it seven? No. 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 P, yep, here we are. We are talking about a weak acid, a strong base. Here is the graph of that neutralization. The equivalence point happens at a pH greater than the um, greater than seven. Halfway between the starting point and the equivalence point is here, and at that point, pKa is equal to pH. Can anyone tell me why? If you can spout that off, I guarantee you a five on the exam. What did you say? Can anyone tell me why halfway between the neutralization of the weak acid with the strong base, the pH equals the pKa? I will give you one small hint. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I just want you to think through what does this look like? The to you? Um, association. The KA is when it's, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's equal. the base over the acid. And this so is the, a buffer situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, when no, these no. two are equal, and you try to put that in the Henderson Hasselbalch <laughs> equation, you get just one. You get zero. Uh, the pH of one, which or the log of one, which is zero. Zero. So uh, if you look at it this way, halfway, oh. halfway to that point, you have neutralized half the acid. It has made half the conjugate base. So these values are equal. This term will fall out of that equation, and pH is equal to pKa. So pH <coughs> is equal to pKa. The pKa is negative log of the Ka, which is the negative log of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10, which is what? 9.21. Yeah, 9.21. Isn't that a perfect time to stop? Yes. Yes. So let's, because we're out of time. You can stop it.